Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And after six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain apart. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his garments became white as light. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is well that we are here. If you wish, I will make you three booths here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He was still speaking when, lo, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell on their faces and were filled with awe. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and have no fear. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Tell no one the vision until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You be seated. Let's pray. Help us to become aware of where we are, Lord. We are at the beginning of Lent beginning of the time in which we remember your journey to Jerusalem and the reason for that journey. Help us to remember that Jesus goes to Jerusalem to confront sin and death, to bear in himself that which we could not bear. Help us to remember as we begin this season of Lent of what our Savior has done and will do for us. Now gather us around your word, help us to hear, and in hearing it, help us to live. We ask and pray all these things in your name. Amen. <clears throat> Friends, grace and peace to you today from God our Father, through our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The children of Israel were at the foot of Mount Sinai, having wandered from their slavery in Egypt, led by Moses, and they're gathered with Moses up on the mountain ready to receive the law of God. 400 years they had been slaves in Egypt. 400 years, think about that. 400 years goes back farther than most of us can remember. We might have some inkling about events that took place 400 years ago, but most of us don't think that far back. And if you can trace ancestors back to those days, they are just names on a piece of paper. You have no idea who they were. But the children of Israel spent 400 years enslaved in Egypt, surrounded by the gods of Egypt, tormented and denied their personhood, their worship, denied everything, and now they were free. By the power of God, Moses had humiliated the Pharaoh, defeated his army as they pursued the people of Israel, and now they stood at the foot of the mountain, Mount Sinai, where Moses had gone up to receive the law, God's commandments. And 40 days he was on the mountain, now it's curious and a bit sad that after 400 years of slavery, having their freedom at the foot of the mountain, waiting for the commandments of God to come, for the promises of God to continue to be un unraveled and fulfilled, that in only 40 days the people had given up on God and made for themselves a golden calf. They couldn't wait 40 days to hear the word of the Lord. 400 years of slavery still weighed heavy on their minds and their souls, and they turned away from the God who had rescued them only 40 days in to worship something that wasn't real. They failed at the mountain. Flash forward a few hundred years and David has conquered the city of Jerusalem 
in which Mount Zion stands. And Solomon fulfills a promise and pledge to God by building there the temple of the Lord on Mount Zion. And he builds it with great beauty, with cedars of Lebanon in gold and jewels and silver, mighty stones, wherein the sacrifices are offered and the incense is raised with the prayers of the people, the psalms and the hymns of faith chanted day in and day out. And the people have received, again, the promise of God that he is with them, that the temple in Jerusalem on the Mount Zion is his footstool, and he reigns over all the earth. And it wasn't that long before they began to think more of the stones of the temple and the gold on the altar and the jewels in the priest's vestments. It came time that they began to think more of the things they were offering than the God they were offering them to. And over time, they forgot the Lord, even though God sent to them prophet after prophet after prophet to remind them that he did not want their sacrifices and he was not pleased with their magnificence of their building, but rather desired their hearts, but they failed too on the mountain. Jesus takes Peter, James, and John up a mountain and there is transfigured before them. Now I'm sure Peter, James, and John had no idea why Jesus was going up the mountain. They probably thought he was just going up to pray because Jesus did that a lot. He went off to lonely places to pray when things were important right on the horizon. And so they figured he's going to pray again and he wants us to be with him. And so they went, but none of them could have predicted that they would see the divine glory revealed in the transfiguration of Jesus. Matthew and Luke describe it as white as lightning, whiter than any fuller on earth could make them, an uncreated light that human eyes could not imagine and human words fail to describe. And if that weren't enough, they saw Moses and Elijah, the law and the prophets, there talking with Jesus. And if that weren't enough, as Peter is telling Jesus, I'm going to build some churches here, Jesus, because this is a good place to worship. The voice comes from the cloud. And there's no mistaking the voice. Even if you've never heard the voice of God before, the first syllable of God's voice convinces you there is a God and they fall on their faces. and worship and they want to stay on the mountain to worship but Jesus takes them down the mountain and in short order they will all run away at Gethsemane Peter will deny three times that he even knows who Jesus is and they fail at the mountain We are at the door of Lent. The 40 days between now and Easter Sunday. But between today and Easter stand, Sunday stands another mountain, another hill. A place called Golgotha. The place of the skull. A place to which Jesus will be driven by Roman whips and taunts by the lips of many of the people who only a week prior praised him and thanked God for his coming into Jerusalem, Jesus carrying the cross bar upon which he will be crucified, there is another mountain yet to come, another hill upon which the salvation of God is to be worked out. And there too, people fail at the mountain. They laugh, they ridicule, they reject, they demand all save one, one crucified thief who understands that this mountain is a mountain of hope. 
not in what is going on around him, but in the one who is crucified next to him. Because on the mountain, on the hill of Golgotha, 40 days hence, will be the salvation of God, will be the sins of the whole world laid upon Jesus. And his dying is the dying of the whole of creation. For he bears with him everything, every failure, every collapse and disappointment that we achieve at the foot of every mountain from the beginning of time to this hour is wrapped up on that hill. Jesus has turned his face to Jerusalem from the mountain of transfiguration for he knows what lies ahead. He knows that there is yet one more mountain, one more hill, and that he alone will be lifted up outside the walls of Jerusalem. And if our story were to end there on that particular mountain, there would be no point or purpose to anything that we say or do. There would be no reason for Ash Wednesday. There would no be no reason for Lenten services. There would be no reason for this building to exist, for people to gather here. If the story ends on Golgotha, it ends for everyone. But Jesus did not fail on that mountain. Jesus did not fail. And bearing the sin and the death of the whole world, faithful to the Father's will, in his dying is the life of the world. And the uncreated light that James and Peter and John glimpsed on the mountain of transfiguration will be the light that bursts forth from the tomb on Easter Sunday. A light far more glorious than any light imagined. And in that resurrection, there are no more failures. There is mercy, there is grace, there is forgiveness, there is life and salvation. For Jesus has not failed on that final hill, but won for us all the victory over sin, death, the power of the devil and one for us the salvation we ourselves could only hope for. Forty days were at the door of Lent, the journey to Golgotha and to the empty tomb. Amen.